Section 9.3, Molecular Shape and Molecular Polarity. So we've already learned that polarity is this idea of one side of a molecule uh, being positive and the other side being negative because of an unequal sharing of electrons. Any atom that's higher in electronegativity is going to draw those electrons to itself more readily and that side of, the, uh, of that molecule will be slightly negative. The other side that has less electron density is going to be slightly positive. Well, that's fine with bonds, and every bond is going to have either a nonpolar quality or some type of a, qual a polar quality. Once you start knowing the shapes of the molecules, you also add to the fact that every one of these bonds is either polar or nonpolar, that means that you can have entire molecules that are polar or entire molecules that are nonpolar. So in this uh, page, I've got just one, one page for you today. You've got two molecules, both of which have polar bonds. Now, if you had no polar bonds, if you just had, say, chlorine gas, Cl2, um, and it has a bond, one bond in between it, that is going to be a nonpolar bond because they're going to share equally. And if it has a nonpolar bond and no other bonds, then the molecule is going to be nonpolar. It's not going to have a positive and negative side because it's a tug of war perfectly matched. In the case of these guys, both of these examples, the bonds are not perfectly matched po uh, polar quality. So lo let's look at this first example. In the oxygen carbon, oxygen has a very, um, let's, let's look at this. Okay. Oxygen has a very high electronegativity. Carbon has a lower electronegativity. So the arrow here for the bond is showing that it is polar, that you've got more electrons on this side, and you see the positive there, it's more positive on this side. Well, that's a polar bond. That means that down here, this is more red, and the carbon is more blue. Okay, the more red is the more negative. So this is going to be delta negative, and this middle part is delta positive. But the problem here, I guess it's a problem or not a problem, is that you've got a linear molecule with two perfectly uh, polar bonds. So over here is high electronegativity. This is neg negative or delta negative. This is all uh, delta positive in the middle. So the delta negatives cancel each other out. They're polar bonds, but since they're at 180 degrees for, from each other, you don't have one side that's positive and one side that's negative. Okay, so they're balanced. Since they're balanced, even though you've got two bonds, the only two bonds are polar, the molecule itself is nonpolar. Okay, so what about the other example? The other example is the water molecule. So the water molecule also has two bonds. Also, the oxygen is higher electronegativity than the hydrogen. That means that you're going to have a polar bond in this direction. Here's your positive on this side. But you're also going to have it here. This is the same, seemingly, because you have two bonds with a polar, but they're not at 180 degrees. That means they don't cancel each other out. You're going to have um, you're going to have a net polarity to this molecule, to where one side is going to be uh, delta negative, the red delta negative, and the two other ends are going to be delta positive. So if they perfectly cancel then you can have polar bonds that have a nonpolar molecule. But if they don't perfectly cancel, then you're going to end up with a molecule with one side partially positive and another side partially ne negative, and that's what you have. And that's what polarity means. This would be a polar molecule. It's polar because one side, it's like a north pole and a south pole. One side is positive, one side is negative. Okay, hope that helps. Pretty easy, I think.